Hi, and welcome to an update on Violet's um, treatment and how we're going with things. So to recap, um, if you want to go and look at my first um, view of Violet's treatment protocol, um, there's a link that you can go to, bit.ly Violet's treatment one, but I'll quickly go through a recap. So uh, she had neuroblastoma tumor near her left adrenal gland about the size of your fist or a cricket ball. Um, it had metastasized to other parts of her body, her skull, her jaw, her spine, her legs, her bone marrow was affected. So um, essentially the treatment involves three different ways of getting rid of the cancer. So shrink it, cut it, fry it. Um, and then a, a newer part of the treatment is what I call defending it through immunotherapy. And that's what we'll talk a little bit more about now. So there was four stages uh, the standard induction and consolidation and maintenance then we added a diagnosis phase at the start um, that was actually about 335 days not that we're counting ago so early november last year and violet since had 16 admissions in hospital and uh, that's been about 113 nights that she's been an inpatient Colleen's written up a nice little story of Violet's diagnosis. Uh, if you haven't read it yet, check out that to be able to see what the, the journey was before we made it to hospital. Induction phase with six cycles of chemo, stem cell harvest and surgery, all done, you know, um, a different way. So cycle one and two were the same, three and five were the same, and four and six were the same. So that's shrink and cut is induction. Consolidation involves the heavy dose chemo. So that's the seventh round of chemo plus um, the bone marrow transplant, stem cell transplant, um, and radiotherapy. So that's shrink and fry. And now we're on to that maintenance phase. At this, the time that I first did the um, presentation to sort of say this is what Violet's treatment is, we weren't really sure what this was we just knew it was six cycles, four weeks long. Um, so this is the defend phase. Now they officially call this the antibody therapy and immunotherapy. There are two different parts to it. Uh, and it's based on the trial by the Children of Oncology Group in the US, AMBL 0032. They actually stopped this trial um, early in the process because they were seeing um, significant improvements in survival rates of kids. Uh, so this is where we see research into children's cancer is, is paying off um, with tr treatments like this. When they initially gave us details on it, there was a heap of paperwork as usual, and then they gave us this page with a heap of numbers on it. Um, and all the different drugs that were given over time. I tried to make sense of it a little bit more by highlighting things, but it still sort of looks like a mess and a rainbow of colors. Um, if I just sort of light up some parts here, they, they start day zero on a Friday. Um, and then if you sort of look, there's day 21 and then 28 is sort of the line after that. Um, but I've tried to separate it out a little bit more um, and just sort of break it down into the six four week cycles um, where they have their day zero and day 28 I've slightly changed the calendar to start on a Monday rather than a Sunday and you'll see why so the base of the treatment if you look at it from a immunotherapy perspective is using RA retinoic acid it's a thing that's usually used for um, acne but is given in a higher dose and and helps the body to sort of uh, you know see a cancer cell and know what it is and then uh, attack it as well now the interesting thing that you can see here is that every cycle there's 14 days of it usually starts on the monday except cycle one for some reason they started on a tuesday and it, and it rolls into the second cycle so there's the start of the blips of confusion as to why is that different than the rest of the cycles. Another key part of this therapy is a drug called CH1418. It's recently been given a commercial name. 
this is a specific antibody that has been created for the treatment of neuroblastoma. Now it's given over four days, so 10 hours for four days where a nurse sits to make sure that there's no major side effects. Um, a big side effect of this is pain. So while the infusion is running, while it's hooked up to morphine, um, so you know the nurse can administer more if she's getting more of that neurophic pain. There's a suite of other drugs that they give her during that stage as well. To help the administration of CH14, there's two other drugs that they give depending on the cycle. So the first one of those drugs is GM-CSF. It's given in cycle one, three, and five. Um, if there's none in cycle six because there's only the RA given in cycle six. The other drug is IL-2 or interleukin and it's given in cycle two and four. And I've got those little green bars there to show that it's also given in hospital. So it's a continuous um, administration over 96 hours. So starts, you know, mid morning on the Monday and runs right through until mid morning on the Friday. Um, and then out over the weekend and then given in the second week as well. Obviously during the second week, CH 14, 18 is given as well. So if we add all of that together, you end up with this messy looking calendar. But I think if you break it down a little bit, it makes a little bit more sense, or at least it did to me. So thanks for your time. Um, one thing I did sort of note out that if it wasn't for research into children's cancer, the, the CH1418 wouldn't exist and the survival rates for neuroblastoma would be lower. So if you can, please um, donate to Violets of Tomorrow, who we're giving to the Children's Cancer Institute in Australia. Thank you.